everybody. My name is Kathleen Sage Huffman. I am Todd's mom, as everybody in the entire place knows by now. Um, I'm, <laughs> yes, I'm an attorney. Uh, I have a small law firm. We have small businesses as clients. Um, I have been friends with Reichart for a while, and he went through some things, legal problems, um, that made me think that the speech that I wanted to give here was how to parent an upstart, um, the legal and regulatory environment of a business, of running a small business. Um, because I have small business clients, I see the kinds of problems that they have. So if any of you are running businesses or thinking of starting businesses, um, here, here's some advice. It's also everything, I'm, I'm not Todd's attorney anymore, thank God. Um, but it's everything I want to say to Todd and Katie's mother is a CPA and we got together on Sunday We figured the best way to be able to talk to our children these days is to give speech at Bill. So here it is guys <laughs> Okay, so the first rule is you have to befriend grown-ups um, What that means is you got to get at least an acquaintance with an accountant a lawyer a banker and mentors you need accountants because you got to keep track of the money from the very beginning. Um, most businesses fail for lack of cash flow, not for lack of profitability. They can't keep the money going one day to another. So an accountant will help you know how to do that. The other thing the accountant does that's really important is they send you those little things to tell you to pay your estimated taxes. You need to do that, okay, because um, if you don't do that, you're just going to get in really big problems, and that is a big problem for a lot of small businesses. So you need your accountant to keep you on track that way. Um, you, need, you need a lawyer in the beginning or at least to think about and get some legal information about what kind of business you want to set up. People often misunderstand this. I have belly dancers coming to me wanting to incorporate if you are a student belly dancer and you're making $12,000 a year, you don't need to make a corporation. It's too expensive. It has too much paperwork associated with it. On the other hand, if you have assets, say you're a 40-year-old writer married to someone that's got a lot of money and you had a previous career as a physician, you, even if your first advance is $5,000, you want to incorporate because you've got assets and corporations protect your assets. And so even if you're not making, and then if somehow you're just making a lot of money right off the bat, you, you want to incorporate to protect it. But some people get fixed on um, legal things that they don't really need to do. Um, you need a banker because you need a line of credit. That's something that helps your cash flow. You'll have to write a business plan. You, a, rela a relationship with a banker is usually a good thing. And then what has helped Todd more than anything else, people like Reichardt, um, who have mentored him. Um, I thought all his mentors were insane for a long time. Um, I'm just going to be straight out about that. I went hiking on the Geek, and they were lusting after the Nobel Prize, and they were talking about downloading brains into computers and solar sails across the universe, and I truly thought they were crazy. Um, and it took me a long time to realize that they would make all these things come true um, and that they were not crazy. Um, <laughs> And if he had listened to his mother, he wouldn't have done anything that he's done with his life. But he listened to people like Reichardt and Garrett and visionary people. So get mentors. Okay. Okay, Reichardt, here's the part you need to pay attention. It's use your words. <laughs> okay. This is contracts. This is Reichardt's favorite subject. Um, you need to get some understanding of contract law. I, probably all of you have seen the movie The Social Network. Okay, I'm not vouching for how close to reality it is. I'm just going to talk about the movie as, it's portray as it portrays the characters in the movies. Because contracts can get people in trouble when they're running businesses. Because there are a lot of contract concepts people don't understand. A contract is an agreement. You need offer and acceptance, and you need what's called consideration. You need people have to exchange something. In the social network, as near as I can tell, there's no written agreement between the Winklevoss twins and Mark Zuckerberg. 
They're, it's the beginning, the initial agreement is verbal, later to become worth $65 million, okay? You can make verbal contracts. Now, it helped them that there were follow-up emails. And I don't know whether they sued on a theory of contract, but I, I think part of what they were trying to say in the movie when Zuckerberg says, I'm in, is that, you know, he's made an agreement. All right, and you can make a verbal agreement worth $65 million. Um, the better practice, if it's important to you, is to get it in writing. But then there's another important lesson in the social network. Read what you sign. You would be absolutely amazed at the amount of very intelligent people who sign things worth a lot of money, and they don't understand them. Sometimes they don't even read them. And you saw that in the social network. Um, I've forgotten his name, but the Harvard kid, okay, um, Sa Saverin. He, um, he's a business student at Harvard, the president of the Harvard Investment Club. He signs away without even reading in the movie, and apparently not understanding a, a document that allows his shares in Facebook to be tremendously diluted somewhere down the road. So contracts are extremely important when you're in business. You need to read them. You need to understand them. If you don't understand them, you need to find somebody that can help you understand them because they can mess you up big time. Okay? So that's the second one. Um, and Breitkart's probably way past that by now, but... And the third point, and this point was part of why I wrote this speech, know the regulatory environment of the business you work in. We live in a highly regulated society. Some regulations are ridiculous, um, and they sound good to politicians and to people who want them, but they get used in absurd ways. Um, I saw Raycart face almost going to jail over a bankruptcy judges. Th th you give speeches about this, so I hope you don't care that I talk about it. Um, over bankruptcy judges interpretation of, you know, what he had to give over from a cloud company that he owned. Um, there was a recent case, this is like horrifying to me as a lawyer, where um, a Sea captain, right? So this is a three-person business, a sea captain and two sea hands fishing off the Florida coast, and he gets, catches a 1,000 fish, 70 of them are underweight. They catch him. I'm an environmentalist, okay, but they catch him. They bring him back. When he gets back, there are three fish missing. This man is prosecuted, and this has a 20-year maximum sentence under, of all things, Sarbanes-Oxley. We all knew Sarbanes-Oxley was about fish, right? You know what? Anybody here know what Sarbanes-Oxley is? It's the law passed after Enron to keep people from shredding documents when they, I see your grin, from shredding documents when the federal government is investigating your fraud. To my horror and embarrassment as a lawyer, two lower courts and by only one vote in the Supreme Court, Two lower coats said Sarbanes Oxley applied to throwing three fish overboard. They were six inches, all total, they were six inches um, off. They were 18 inch fish and the limit was 20 inches. Um, and he was, he was actually, it was 30 days in jail for him. They didn't do the 20 years, but when he was prosecuted, he was facing 20 years. Um, and um, Justice Roberts finally decided that the sarbanes Oxley did not apply to those three fish. Uh, so, okay, it's five years in federal prison if you, um, maximum, if you sign for a federal benefit and falsify anything on that federal benefit form. So if you fill out anything that's going to get federal money, you need to be very careful. And I, and I have seen people... These are employees have to like give up their, I had a lady who once who moved her homeless sister, 10 people up on the list for getting Section 8 housing. 
she resigned a 16 year job in return for not getting prosecuted for five years for signing for a federal document. That's how I know that. Um, so you need to understand the regulatory environment that you work in. I recognize you are all upstarts and by your nature you, are, you don't observe boundaries. Okay, you wouldn't do what you did um, if you were boundary observers. And, and so when I deal with people that start businesses that have the kind of guts that it takes to you know, get a vision and just go for it, they are always people who um, break boundaries. My favorite client, uh, I represent a non-public school for special needs children and the lady that headed that until she was 96 years old began teaching a traumatized veteran of World War II when he lost his speech to post-traumatic stress disorder. She slept with him. Against the rules then, against the rules now, ultimately married him, founded this school, <laughs> okay? But a boundary violator, right? Okay, so I recognize that if you were not boundary violators, you would not be the kind of people that started businesses. Um, but I, I also see, she never got in any trouble, thank heaven. Uh, they founded the school and had great kids. Um, but um, I recognize you're all boundary violators. Um, so uh, just remember that there are those people out there that might come back to get you. I also wanted to say, I'm proud of you. <laughs> you know, I, I just get to say it in front of all these people. <laughs> you know, I get, so. All right, does anybody have any questions? You got free legal advice here. <laughs> yes. Hire an attorney? Okay, okay, well, I mean, a, read them. Yeah. I, I don't know of resources online. There are, there's the small, you, uh, no, yes. I, I actually, I was gonna mention that. One reliable um, source of um, kind of self-help books for all kinds of legal advice is called NOLO, N-O-L-O -O Press. Um, and so it has self-help books. Um, I, I have a book that costs 500, dollars in it's called advising california employers if you really have employees it's three volumes it's put out by bureau of Nas national affairs or no maybe ceb anyway um i can usually find in 45 seconds like the answer to any problem it's got tabs so if you for if you have employees that's a really good um source but um as far as contracts, the main thing I would tell you is just read them. You would be surprised how many people don't read them at all. And if you have questions, somebody drew it up. Ask the other guy's lawyer if his, I wouldn't trust them, but, but ask him. Go ahead. Yes. Right, go ahead, Rick. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, so good. I, Go ahead, I have a, another suggestion. So uh, something that, that I do is, so I have an attorney who's very expensive. Um, I have a, an attorney who's a, a friend of a friend who just graduated from law school um, the, who's, who's very inexpensive. I don't want, I wouldn't want the inexpensive just out of law school attorney to be like in negotiations on my behalf. 
but my actual attorney is actually eight hundred dollars an hour. Um, and but so what I do is I go to the cheap attorney and I sit down with her and I have, and, and I work through things with her and, and we talk through things so that when I sit down in a room where there's now you know by the time you get all the attorneys in the room there are thousands of dollars an hour being burned. Uh, I can jump straight to the point, and then also very importantly, I sound halfway intelligent, um, uh, and that, I, and I believe that that means that people try and you know pull less you know moves on me because they think that I know what I'm talking about. But really, I'm just parroting what the chief attorney told me uh, to say. Oh, okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh. The small businesses, yeah, I believe that it is. I've never used it, but I, I know people who have, and I think that they are, have helpful resources. Go yeah, ahead. So, so there, are, there, are, there are some ways um, to get uh, inexpensive uh, access to resources. A lot of universities um, will have um, uh, like um, you know various um, like uh, things that they've set up to help like spin out companies and whatnot. And so like um, there's a so this isn't really a legal thing, but there, there's, a, there's a grant process with the U.S. government, and you can hire attorneys to help you who are very expensive, or um, the you can take a hundred dollar course at the university, and then and every time that we go through one of these, we sign up for the course because the instructor will take questions, and and we can make appointments with the instructor, and so like we can, we can, and and for you know a hundred dollars, we now have like. For a, a semester, the ability to walk in and not and not be billed by the hour for the help, um, and so we get thousands of dollars of <laughs> help uh, for a hundred dollars um, just by just by like this sort of trick of you know signing up for a really cheap course uh, that's taught by someone who would normally be extremely expensive. I'm glad you came. <laughs> <laughs> Keep asking questions. What, what are the different types of corporations? Oh, um, well, I, I don't do the incorporations. I, there are LLCs, there are partnerships, but I'm not the transactional attorney. And I do labor and employment law, so I mostly am the kind of attorney that tells people, no, those people aren't independent contractors. They're employees or they're exempt or non-exempt. And by the way, don't make those mistakes either because the Department of Labor is mean and big fines and... So I, I'm not going to try to answer that. My partner does that. Um, I don't do that. Go ahead. Yeah, yes. Right. Right.
that's a that's a good answer. And that's a good a, answer. Another sort of perspective that I have is that it's very important to choose your attorney well. Um, right. So at, at three scan, um, uh, I fired two attorneys before finally settle, settling on one that we like, and it is extremely expensive to move to change attorneys because the new attorney wants to reread everything that the attorney did to yeah. bill you for it. Uh, because and then they should, because they're going to have to deal with the situation. And a, a mistake that, that I made early on is um, going with an attorney that was too inexpensive. Um, and um, and if you're going to like open up a donut shop, you don't need an expensive attorney because the, the things you're doing are relatively straightforward. If you're going to be say like starting a technology company that's going to at some point be doing like SEC filings and like very complex things, it's actually much like in my opinion after having been burned a few times, better to go with a more expensive firm because the firm is, is large and has attorneys who specialize in lots of different things, and they are more expensive than a than an individual attorney who's you know um, sort of covering a wide range of issues, um, but you are less likely to end up. Um, in a situation that is where the attorney is in over their head because they, because they can escalate the issue up to more experienced attorneys or over to people who have um, uh, specialization in that area because the, the law is, is you know, like, like every field, has a lot of specialties and just because someone you know, is a lawyer doesn't mean that they can cover all your legal needs. Yeah, no, that's one good other, advice one too. Other thing, um, deciding the corporate structure, a lot of people think oh, I have a company and I need an attorney to make my corporation, and it's backwards. You actually need to go to your accountant first and find out what your financial needs are because the different corporate types have to do with how the business is structured. So for example, you may not have a choice but go the full way of getting a C Corp depending on who your investors are. Uh, but you have to know what your financial goals are because fundamentally, uh, Corporations are financial vehicles. Uh, the protection is generally overblown uh, because if you're if you're close enough to be a startup, pretty much you're not going to have any protection because you're an actor. So you're going to say, "Oh, it's my corporation." You say, "Yeah, but you did it," and so you're still in trouble. Um, uh, it's only when you start to get farther away where you have middle management or decision or on the ground decisions made, which are separate from your investors or uh, the upper management, that that, that that sort of protection ever comes into any real uh, effect. I would I agree with that. That's why accountant was the first person I listed. The only one thing I will say is don't get legal advice from your accountant. Sometimes people do that, and that's not a good idea. No, you just you okay. need to go to your attorney and say, hi, I have this that I'm dealing with. I have X, Y, and Z uh, 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 investors, and you know they'll go. And you, you know, a good corporate attorney is going to know immediately. Hey, wait a minute, have you done your have you done your SEC file? Um, but you, you won't know if you don't know the right thing to present to him. Your accountant will tell you what to what to say. Right. Yes. Right. But some accountants sometimes think. I sometimes get people out of trouble because they've taken legal advice from their accountants. Not always a good idea. That's a bad idea. Yeah. You know. Yeah, yes. Right. Right. This this gentleman well, has a hiring an employee, an actual employee. Right. Oh, right. The, the, the decision we made at the beginning to do our payroll for the payroll services and all the tax filings was probably the smartest thing. Yes. Because it saved a world of trouble when the money was very dear. I did not have any temptation to not send me the tax money. No, you know, no, I, yes, yeah, no, I agree with that. Uh, the big, one of the big, there are a couple of big mistakes that I see people make. One is to not send in the estimated money. There, 
You don't have very much money, so they don't send in the estimated money, and then it just gets much, much worse. And then the other one is people try to get by with independent contractors because they don't want to kerfritz with the payroll, with all the payroll and deciding what the employee is. And a lot of times it's not, if they're working full time for you, they're probably not an independent contractor. And um, you're, you're running a risk of getting a lot of penalties um, when you part ways. It will usually be when you part ways with that person. Um, then they come back and, and they're gonna ask, money is dear to startups, and all of a sudden you owe them like three times the money, and sometimes for stupid and technical violations. And so, yes, an accountant to keep you straight is a really good thing. I don't know how much time I just took. Okay. It's a 20 minute talk, yeah. right? Okay, I did good. Yeah, Raycar, you have anything you want to say? You've got you've got the most the best advice of anybody. <laughs> right. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you.